walked with yourself. Amen. Amen. So it is something that we should appreciate when we have somebody who feed us with the word of God. Amen. Amen. Because it's the sword. He's giving you a sword. Amen. Amen. But when you are facing problems, you know what to say. You know what to do. Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate her as she's coming. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a setup. <laughs> Don't believe anything that he has said. I know he's a man of God, but everything that he said does not. Let's lift up our hands towards heaven. Just stand just for just to worship and acknowledge him. Thank him for the prayers that have gone forth. Thank him for the word that has been shared, the exhortation. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. We say, Father, have your way in us. Thank you for every person that is represented here this morning. Lord, I ask you for an empowering word, a word that will liberate somebody, a word that will meet somebody at the point of their need, that will unlock their next level in life. And Holy Spirit, above every other thing, I just want to pause and just tell you I love you. We just want to tell you we love you. Open up your mouth and just tell him how much you love him. Holy Spirit, we exalt you. You are holy, you are wonderful. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you because you're just God. We just say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Please be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. How was your week? It was a wonderful, hallelujah. But I believe we need a bit of energy, eh? Hallelujah. I feel like, you know, it's like, I don't know, you're tired. <laughs> Since you're tired, I need to shake you off. Hallelujah. I just want to say hi to those who are tuning in online as well before I get deeper into the word. Hope everybody brought their journals and their pens and their Bibles. I'm checking around. Um, hope you're ready. Today is going to be one of those days where we go deeper in the word. We always go deep, but today we're going deeper. I don't know about the meat and the milky part, but whether you're having the milky bar, whether you're having a chuck or whatever, we're going for chisanyama, but nonetheless. As you saw this morning, if you joined the prayers this morning, we spoke about unlimited joy. And I believe that it's only fitting that we understand what joy profits us as individuals in Christ. Hallelujah. The profit of joy is what I want to talk about today. So I don't want anybody wondering about, I don't want your mind to wonder. Please don't make me stop because if I stop, I get into your business. I don't want, I want everybody's attention here. Are we here? Help me shake your neighbor and ask your neighbor, are you here? So I don't want any, so don't make me preach. Nobody must fall asleep. It's not a boring word. Joy is something that you're excited about. Joy is something that you, you have to have energy for. Amen. Amen. How can you say you are rejoicing in the Lord and you are looking all drabby and looking all sad? Joy is something that nobody wants to talk about often because they want these heavy messages. They want this uh, pulling down of strongholds. It's very funny because uh, Minister Mtu was saying the same thing. But until you say, hey, every power, challenging my what, what, people are not energized. Just be energized in the Lord. Just be happy with the Lord. Be happy that you are a Christian. Be rejoice. I rejoice. I just choose. I'm happy because I'm a Christian. Hallelujah. Yes, I see all the attacks of the enemy. Just be happy. Because the enemy is confused when you're just happy. Amen. In the midst of him trying to oppress you, just be happy. Amen. And I always teach you that the miracles move in the atmosphere of joy. Hallelujah. You will see through the scriptures. I'm going to teach you and show you the scriptures that show you that the more you are sad, the more God does not move for you. It's not me. It's scriptural. So if you choose to be a sad baby... That's exactly what you're going to have. Psalms 16 verse 11. The book of Psalms chapter 16 verse 11 says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. So anybody who is sad right now, that means you're saying the presence of God is not here. I don't know where you are. The book of Psalms. Umpisaluma 16 verse 11. <laughs> don't make me preach. I'll come for you in Zulu just now. 
Pesalome ya wi 16 verse ya wi 11 Amen bazalwan You will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy So anybody who's not joyful that that means the two guys that just came before me they didn't do anything If they are not joyful, that means they say you didn't bring the presence of God. Uh. <laughs> that is it. So I don't know. If you, at least I saw some joy in some people. Don't stress. Don't, no shaking. <laughs> no shaking, men of God. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Anytime you say you've been in the presence of God, we must see you being joyful. In your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. They don't wait until they buy you Louis Vuitton. The pleasures must of necessity flow. So now we begin to understand from the book of Psalms that joy is an asset of non-quantifiable worth. You can't quantify it, you can't contain it. As far as your spirituality is concerned, joy is a necessity. If you're going to ever have strength in anything that you're embarking on as a Christian, you need joy. Joy is your source of strength. In order to win in the battles of life, you need joy. Somebody Amen. shout joy. joy. So my objective this morning is very easy and hopefully I will be quick about it. Understanding the place of joy in the life of a child of God. Understanding the place of joy in the life of the child of God. By the way, today I'm just going to do spot checks and see what exactly you are writing on these phones where you are jotting down. I'll just stop <laughs> randomly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number one, joy is a non-negotiable. It's non-negotiable, it's irreplaceable, it is an asset of immeasurable value. You cannot measure it in the life of a child of God. Non-negotiable, irreplaceable. Secondly, the devil can only keep your goods if he can steal your joy. So there is nothing that the devil can steal and keep with him if you are having your joy. Because you don't even, you, you count it all and you move on. You move on. You say, did you steal that? Do you think it, that does not break me? He can only keep you goods if your goods will be kept behind if he can steal your joy. But if you show him that you are not shaken by what he has stolen, you are not shaken because you know your God is able to multiply it and, and replace it hundred times and even better. So now you begin to understand, number three, that the loss of joy will make the loss of other things effortless. So if the devil can steal your joy because he stole your car and made your car go into an accident, he knows that you are very flimsy. Anything that he takes from you, it's effortless. I'm just telling you the opposite of things so that you are careful. Because he knows if he has taken your joy in the one area, he says, you are easy meat, you are milk. I'm going to have you for, for <laughs> I'm going to have you for conflicts. You are conflicts. Is that what makes you sad? The fact that somebody dumped you, that's the level of height that you are now stressing and you are going to be depressed because somebody dumped you. Come on. That means you are thinking God does not have capacity. God does not, God has capacity. Look around you. Look at the beautiful around you. God has capacity. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Minister Mtu reads me very well. So if the devil has not touched your joy, he has not touched your portion. If the devil has not touched your joy, he has not touched your portion. Number five, the joy of the Lord is the antidote for every dark climate of gloominess. Whatever is a dark season in your life, your antidote is joy. Sometimes it's not complicated. Some, sometimes it's not needing fasting. My influencer, it doesn't need fasting and prayer sometimes. It just needs joy. Sometimes you don't complicate things. Just, just apply the pill called joy. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2 says, For in fact darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness will cover the people. But the Lord will rise upon you and his glory and brilliance will be seen upon you. So in that atmosphere of joy, the darkness has to lift and light has to come in and his glory and brilliance is seen on you. So the joy of the Lord is your survival strategy. If you are to survive in this life, it's your survival strategy against words of negativity. This is the joy that will respond. Mm. Father, I don't have chance. I don't have stress. I don't have time for negativity. It is your survival strategy against pessimism. It is your survival uh, um, strategy against being sad. Mm. So now we begin to understand that joy gives you access to what money cannot buy. 
people can have money, but they might not have joy. That's why sometimes you can find more joy in the house of somebody who's a domestic worker who earns 3,000 and the one who earns 3 million every single month, if you like, there might not be joy in that house. I spoke to a lady one day who said, I, I said, if your husband is doing all these things and has bought you all these things and you're staying in this triple story mansion and she said to me, Pastor, sometimes you don't understand these things, they are boring me now. It doesn't count anymore in my life It, because there's no joy. He doesn't come home. He's not here. <laughs> Maybe, Pastor T, what are you saying? You say you'd rather have the money than the joy. <laughs> Give me the money. Keep the joy. Keep the joy. Because <laughs> bring the house. Because <laughs> you might be in that house and your husband is busy adulterating outside. And no, um, what, how, much, how many clothes can you truly buy that will give you the joy? At some point, you are in quiet and silence with your thoughts in that house, in that massive house where you can't even enter certain rooms. Ask those people whether they are joyful or not. Ask those people. I'm not saying aspire to be poor. I'm saying... <laughs> so be rich... But try and pull up with the joy. Don't leave joy behind. Keep a balance of life. Amen. Amen. So joy will give you access to what money can't get you. Amen. It will give you access to what education cannot get you. Many have degrees, but they don't have the joy. Many have degrees, but they're walking the street broke, no job, no joy. What is guaranteeable without God? Nothing. Without the favor of God accompanying your education degree, dololo, joy will give you access to what connections cannot give you. Because joy, the joy of the Lord will unlock favor for you that you don't have to pay off somebody else. I like what Apostle said um, at the all night. He said somebody gave him $10 one time and the person was behaving as if he has just liberated his whole lineage. <laughs> You know, it's like, hey, now, yeah, you owe me because I gave you $10. No, 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 no. You know, there are people like that who are thinking they plugged you just because they gave you $10. That you must now owe them for life. And like, hey, I hail you. Hey, brother, I'm too. Hey, that $10. Every day for three years, you are still thanking him for $10 that you gave me three years ago. My God. Joy is a major identity of kingdom people. It's a seal of your Christianity. That is your identity. Amen, somebody. Joy is what will position the child of God for the best of God and the best of life. You want the best of God and the best of life? You need joy. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3 says, Therefore with joy will you draw water from the springs of salvation. And I'll show you how this scripture also fits in, in the fact that you cannot be creative outside joy. That's why you will find people who are creatives. They will tell you, I just need to go connect with nature and their work. I just, I need, you know, if no peace, there's no creativity. You can't write a song being sad. Can you bake, my gourmet chef? You can't even bake. She's a creative, I know. She can't cook until she's happy because chances are she's either going to bend the pots or she's going to feed us something that doesn't taste nicely. So Christianity is robbed of its life and essence when joy is abs absent. Your Christianity, you can't even enjoy it. When you are doing it under pressure, when you are doing it as a forced thing, you are not enjoying it. When joy is absent, you don't enjoy your Christianity. Because some people came to Christianity because they are struggling. Not necessarily that they really love God. They came, you know, in the lo in location, they used to say, oh, fast. Yeah. You know, the world, has, they, they, the world has dealt with you. Life has dealt with you. That is why you are a Christian. You say, ah, don't seem like this. Born again, born again for where? The life has dealt with him. That's why you have been humbled by life. That is why you chose to remove this road. Yeah. But I'm looking for Christians this morning who are saying, I came because of the joy of the Lord. I came. Something jumped in my spirit. That is why I responded. That is why I became born again. Yes. I was excited. That is why sometimes when you hear 
Minister Mtu says, I was glad when they said, I must come to the house of the Lord. Were you really glad or you were dragging yourself like, Ish. if I don't go, that woman is going to ask me why I didn't come to church. I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. You were not calculating Dolly, your, your, your McDonald's that you're going to buy tomorrow. You said, I'm going. You looked at your wallet and you said, you, we are going to church. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. So if you look at the aspect of joy that you are gainful when you are having joy, it's not gainlessness, it's gainfulness. Hallelujah. So we now understand that joy has its profit. Profit, what kind of profit does it have? It establishes the presence of God. You want God to move fast, the joy. Why do we, one of the things I've always said to you is there's something happening at like praise and worship. I might not have prayed but I would know when I mount the stage, immediately when I engage in praise and worship, I knew the presence of God would be there. Without prophesying, without even laying hands on people, healings would be taking place. Why? The joy that was in the praise. That is what he means and says, I inhabit the praises of my people. Because you can't praise and be sad. How can you be dancing for the Lord and say, I'm very angry. I'm very angry with Pastor T. And you are dancing, I'm very angry. I'm very angry. <laughs> It's not possible. Do you see those two feelings don't go together? You cannot be joyful while you are dancing for the Lord. It's impossible. In fact, they're irritating me. Ooh. Maybe when, when they're leading prayer and says, I said stand on your feet. I said say amen. Then you might be saying, I don't know, amen, amen. <laughs> you know, Pastor T does not have understanding for when you are wearing heels in this church. He just wants you to stand either way. So I don't know whether the amen we are saying, we are saying joyfully or we are saying it forcefully. Just because, let me just say this amen. Psalm 16, 11, the one that we just read says, in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. That's why we can praise and be fully joyful. First Chronicles 16, 27 says, splendor and majesty are found in his presence and joy is found in his place in his sanctuary so there's no way you should ever allow any first timer to come here and find you miserable sad and not excited whether the choir is singing in tune out of tune taking away microphones we shall be glad in the house of the lord there's one thing we can harmonize and that is the joy of the lord Amen. They can't take us down. They can't keep us down. Anywhere where joy is found, God is found. Don't ever forget that. There is an easy way to get the attention of God and you get it in a climate of celebration. You want the attention of God, it's in the climate of celebration. Trust me, even in your private closet. If you're going to be sad and keep on popping up this, this word, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I'm depressed. God ain't coming, guys. God ain't coming to that meeting. God is not there. You might have cried and sobbed and like, oh, I told him, you know, I was, you were not having a conversation with God. God was not there. Trust me, you were just pouring yourself out. You were, you were taking out all the extra liquid that was inside of you. Hallelujah. Amen. So there's an easier way of getting the attention of God. It's an atmosphere of celebration. Because once you celebrate, you'll be amazed that it unlocks more doors. So right now, make up your mind. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to plug in. Don't let your mind wander. I, I'm telling you again, there's one or two people. I keep on having to bring their attention back here. Because you are wondering about the thing that you are stressing about that has been stressing you. Your mind keeps wondering. Come back here. We are here now. But about midnight when Paul and Silas prayed, there was a shaking that happened. They were doing what? They were singing hymns of praise. The prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. So powerful. I mean, Acts chapter 16. Sorry, did I give you the scripture? Acts chapter 16, verse 25 to 26. Make sure you are writing down the scriptures at least. I'm just being nice to you. I'm not waiting for you to open it like the other Men of God were shouting at you. I'm being nice. There was a great earthquake so powerful that the very foundations of the prison were shaken and at once all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. 
chains must break in the atmosphere of joy. I don't know what you came here chained to or what was chaining your life in the past. Those chains can only be broken in that atmosphere of joy. Joy triggers the release of strength in the life of a Christian. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 says, Ezra said to them, go your way, eat the rich festival food, drink the sweet drink, send portions to him for who has nothing is prepared. I think I, I, I prayed on the scripture this morning. I said, the time and the season has come. Because I said today, we declared it the month of joy. This is our month of joy. Amen. We are going to experience unlimited joy. Amen. And the instruction was very clear from the book of Nehemiah. Go home and put on the best meal ever. Eat and call your neighbors and give them food. Some people are running budgets and say, Pastor, you can't, you don't understand. We normally cook four portions of meat a, a day. So when you say you must give, give somebody. Take that very portion of meat, cut it in half. And you, this is what the scripture is saying. He says, for the day today is holy to our Lord. And do not be worried for the joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. I better be in the stronghold of joy than any stronghold of witchcraft. Amen, Amen somebody. Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19. How am I doing for time? Please make sure that I stop by one o'clock. Whatever you do, you just flash me like this. Just flash me with the right hand. These days I'm very timekeeping. Have you seen me? Though the fig tree does not blossom and there is no fruit on the vines, though the yield of the olive fails and the fields produce no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold, yet I will choose to rejoice in the Lord. I choose. It's a choice. I choose to rejoice in the Lord. I choose not to be sad. I choose not to be angry. I choose not to fight people. The Lord is my strength, my source, my courage, my invincible army. He has made my feet steady and sure like hinds feet and makes me walk forward with spiritual confidence on many high places. When you rejoice in the Lord, you refuel your strength. Nobody's writing notes. I think they like just looking at me. (laughs) All around, any form of weakness that is happening around your life, I command it to be removed in Jesus' name. Amen. Any form of weakness that has been taking away the joy, that has been making joy absent in your life, I command it to be removed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The channels of joy and the channels of insight coincide together. So anytime joy is present, insight has to be present. That is why the scripture that I gave you earlier in the book of Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3, 12, 3, says, therefore with joy will you draw from the waters of salvation. From the springs of salvation, you must draw the waters. What are these waters? These are your creativity, the ideas, the next step that you want God to show you. Where does he, what decision he wants you to make. Strategies are drawn from the wells of salvation. Strategies and you draw water from from, from the springs of salvation with joy. Then 2 Kings chapter 3 verse 15 to 16. When you have time, please make sure you read the entire chapter, especially when you start it from verse 14. But now bring me a musician. And it came about while the musician was playing that the hand and the power of the Lord came upon Elisha. And he said, thus says the Lord, make this valley, the Arabah, full of trenches. What was happening beforehand is that there was a war and there was obviously a famine and there was no water. And somebody then said, I know of somebody that can solve this situation. I know somebody that we can call that can cause there to be a water because the instruction here was saying, bring me a musician. Elisha says, I will bring a musician. And while the musician was playing, what was he doing? He was creating an atmosphere of joy. He was creating an atmosphere where the presence of the Lord could come in. And when the presence of the Lord came in, water began to appear. Water began to appear. You are thirsty, water begins to appear. You are broke, wealth begins to appear. When in the absence of joy. He said, thus says the Lord, make this valley, the Arabah, full of trenches. Now think about it. If somebody, the person who told them about Elisha had not been there and said, I saw Elisha one day pouring water into the hands of Elijah. What is that talking about? Service. 
come my Bible scholars, keep up with me. Service. Because there was a servant who knew and saw somebody and, and said, I saw Elisha saving who? Elijah. I'm just dropping this as an extra revelation for you. That because of the service, there was somebody who was highlighted for the next assignment. Oh, you guys are not ready to, for me to do. I think we need air conditioner now so that the heat goes off. What I'm trying to highlight, if you go to Psalms 133, the Bible says, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil that is flowing from the beard of Aaron, right? You know that scripture. Coming down the edge of his priestly robe, consecrating the whole body. It is like the Jew of the Mount of Hermon coming down on the hills of Zion for they, for they, that's the one I want to highlight for you, verse three, for they, the Lord has commanded a blessing. Amen. They, God has commanded a blessing. Mm -hmm. wow. They, that point, that hem of the garment of Aaron, they, they, there's a place called they, reach there and you will see the blessing manifest. There's a place called they, it's reached through service. Elisha could not have unfolded it and could not have unpacked it had he not served the previous man of God with water. He would not have been able to take out water. Let me leave you. Let me give you the, let me give you the milk. Uh, is it Amasi? Let me give you, let me try and leave the milk and go to Amasi. Arise and shine. Arise. I like the amplified version because it clarifies what you are arising from. You are arising from spiritual depression to a new life. Arise and shine. Shine means you are becoming radiant. You are becoming radiant with the brilliance of the Lord for your light has come and the glory and the brilliance of the Lord has arisen upon you. There was a light that came upon the Jews. There was a light that came upon Esther. There was a light that illuminated so that there was gladness and joy and honor. Hallelujah. The atmosphere of celebration, I repeat again, is the, is the climate for inspiration. You need inspiration, it's in this atmosphere of celebration. You need inspiration, it's where depression is not allowed. And I know somebody will say, Pastor Fortune, how do you mean I, I just find myself mechanically there, clinically there? No. Where there is depression, you cannot be inspired. Doors of inspiration are totally closed. When you are on the depression path, you are on the death path. That is why I want you to fight depression in your families. Immediately you hear somebody talking depression, rise against it and fight. I refuse. My child cannot be depressed. Check your child very regularly. What are they going through? Check them. Yeah? They can't touch you. You're untouchable. You are totally untouchable. Amen. They can't get you. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are set apart for greatness. Amen. That is your destiny. I'm not even done praying for you yet. You are my special prayer today. Amen. Joy is a tonic for health and vitality. You want to be energized, you want to be walking in health, it's in joy. People who don't have joy die very early, by the way. <laughs> they don't enjoy their pension, they die very early. Proverbs 17, 22 says, a good heart doth good is good medicine and joyful mind causes healing. A joyful mind. People who are happy, things flow. People who are sad, they have every ailment and everything. Honestly speaking, I know it from experience. <laughs> The time when I focus, you know this week I had to fight flu like nobody's business. Like, I don't have time for you flu, really. I know you want me to be down and feeling, no, I didn't have time. Have you ever been so busy and there's things to do in life? It's like, I can't, I can't entertain flu. So sickness has a way of making you want to say, oh, I'm not feeling strong, I want to sleep. Sleep for what? What am I sleeping for when things are happening? Somebody could be getting lotto and I'm busy sleeping. <laughs> I could be somewhere getting the lotto. Why are you in despair, oh my soul? Why have you come, become restless and disquieted within me? 
Hope in God and wait expectantly for him, for I shall yet praise him. The help of my countenance and my God. Most of you don't know, like last year I got paralyzed again. For months, I could not move. I could not move. I could not even sit on a chair long. I was getting depressed. And when I checked, I was not being expectant of anything. All I was focused was this pain. And I was so sad, like, God, how can you allow this to me? How can you allow this happen to me? That's all. That's what I'm saying. The joy of the Lord had left me. All I was seeing was problems. And I was reminding him of everything that I had gone through in life. That you, you keep on dropping me. Don't worry, don't do that. <laughs> but some of us, when we, when we get to, to be intimate with God, we just go out and you just go over there. You know, you just... God, you see now, I, can, I couldn't pick up a lot of things. I, was like, I would come to church, but in my heart, I hope you are delivered from my authentic self. If I tell you that I did this thing, I was so focused on this thing. Health had left me. But the more I served God, the more I realized the joy of the Lord was my strength. I drew my energy from the testimonies of other people. I kept on praying for others. And the more they testified, I was energized. That's the truth. The more I saw others getting, I did not become envious. I was like, yeah, God, that means my prayer worked. If I prayed for this one and it happened, that means it can also happen for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalms 42, 11 says, wait expectantly from him, for him. Expect that he's going to answer you. Amen. Don't be discouraged. 43, 5 of Psalms says, why are you in despair, O oh my soul? Why are you restless and dis disturbed? Don't get restless. Don't get disturbed. So joyfulness equals healthfulness. You become healthful. There is a connection between your joy and your health, as I said. There is a joylessness. If you are joyless, it's a foundation for sickness. Ask anybody that if you really trace how did you get sick, what was happening before in your life at that point? Joylessness joylessness. It's a foundation for sickness. Your heart gets sick because you were heartbroken. And then it leads to other things. Now suddenly you have high blood pressure. So many things start happening. And joylessness does not only affect your health, it affects your finances as well. You can't go around and saying, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I'm not going to work. How did the walls of Jericho come down? With a shout of what? Praise. Shout of what? Of joy. It didn't get down with a shout of depression. Depression makes you not want to do anything. You don't want to go anywhere. You can't, you can't be led by feelings. I'm feeling depressed today. I'm not going to go to work. They will fire you. It's simple. You, if you're led by feelings, they will just fire you. The world does not have time for people who are depressed. And that's the reality of the world. I'm depressed, Pastor. I'm depressed. I couldn't come to church. Okay, here yeah, we're still tolerating you. We are just waiting for that. You will just notice that we're no longer praying for you anymore because. <laughs> How many times can we cast out the same devil? At some point, we get exhausted. Can't you bring a new devil? It cannot be the same one. Don't worry. We will still pray for your depression, even if you choose to hold on to this friend in five years. But what I'm saying is that depression, you cannot be ruled by your feelings. When you get up in the morning, you get out of bed, how are you feeling? I'm feeling down. What? No, 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 no. My boss says, I can't listen to somebody who's complaining more than 30 minutes. She said, and I laughed. And I determined, on my, it was my first week at the workplace, and she told me, oh, by the way, please, when you get back to the office, talk to this other person. I don't know what's their story. I don't know exa exactly what they do. And this person reports. <laughs> I don't know what this person exactly does. But when you find out, please try and make them. This is, we were not, I'm not, she doesn't know anything about me being a pastor, by the way. She was just giving me an instruction. I don't know why she felt that I'm able to do, I'm able to. <laughs> she says, please do something when you get back to Pretoria. Make sure that this person is revived because I'm tired of listening to complaints. She never gives me solution. I said, Jesus, Father God, should, I must remove this from replay <laughs> before I get into trouble. See me and no chest. So your joy impacts you even in the workplace. If you go around moping, people are not 
I, they don't have time. When are you always have issues, you're always depressed. People don't have time to tolerate people who are like that. Am I wrong, my influence? You can't. Every day we greet you. Hey, we thank God, my sister. We are trying, oh, what are you trying? All of us are trying. Let's just energize. All of us are trying. We are trying, yes. Ooh, I'm blessed. Because that day I might be having my own issues, so I can't, you know, maybe next week, try me next week, but this week, can you just give me a refresher? Give me a refresher. Let me have a different response from you, Minister too. Let me know that even you, you see the joy of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. In that way, potentials for new release comes. Amen. Joy releases your potential for new release. I'm going to skip some of the scriptures, but I want you to take them down. First Samuel 10, verse 5 to 6, you can go and read that. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily and you will prophesy with them. It's talking about uh, Saul. Isaiah 12, 3, we've gone through a joyous moments. Joy leads to contentment. Joy Joy leads to contentment. And when you're content, you lock out depression. Hallelujah. It will deliver to you an, a climate of excitement. And you will be delivered again. I just made a lot of notes around depression. Oh, Father, we are being delivered from depression. Amen. We must be delivered from depression. And more than anything, I want us to intercede for our family members this whole week. We need the joy of the Lord in our families. We need peace in our families. We need the joy of the Lord to come back. A total restoration. The more confident you are, the more competent you are. Anytime you are confident, you will even produce better in your workplace. Even in your schoolwork, you need the confidence of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Ecclesiastes 5.20. He will not often consider the troubled days of his life because God keeps him occupied and focused on the joy of his heart. And the tranquility of God dwells in him. First Samuel 1, 18 to 19. Okay, this might, might probably be the only exception when Hannah was just moping around the temple and crying so much and wanted a baby. And then he, finally God decided to bless her with a child. But it's not always. Even after the priest was hearing Hannah cry, he said, go and do what? Minister Mtu says, go, you can go and eat and be happy now. Your prayers have been answered. So sadness as a countenance equals delay in expectation. For all that time, Hannah was busy crying up and down. Nothing was happening until the priest came and said, go, done. Because he first asked, are you drunk? She said, I'm not drunk, but I am sorrowful because I don't have a child. I want a child. So how many cries had she cried before wanting the child and the child was not coming? Look at this mystery. Jesus, every time, before he does a miracle, what was he saying? Weep not. Do you remember that statement? He says, weep not. Why would Jesus tell you to stop crying? He's saying you are annoying him. This crying is not helping. You've been crying for too long and it's not manifesting anything. Weep not. <laughs> you think Jesus said anything mistakenly by accident? It was not an accident. Jesus was saying, where is the joy? Because I can only respond in joy. You are boring me with this crying. I need you to be excited. I need you to set me up for like, Jesus, I know you're going to do it. Jesus, I told them that you are going to come through for me. Jesus, I, I told them you're going to give me a job. He has to show up because you've already set him up. Mm -hmm. You see, they set me up. Whether or not I deliver meat, it is meat that you will have to hear because they said meat, meat, meat is coming. He probably made meat. Cheese and yam. So, Pastor Tobias, if he said I'm delivering meat, Father, you have to anoint this word. It has to be meat one way or the other. Amen. One way or the other. God was set up. He said, and I didn't do it, so God deal with him. He set up God. So God says, set me up. Be joyful. Tell me what I can do. Tell me what I can do. But immediately you are crying. It's like you are putting God like, hey, I don't know if you're going to come, or, but I hope you are seeing my cry. Hey. So joy, the other thing it does, it facilitates your progress in life. It facilitates your speed in life. Your progress in life is facilitated by joy. Isaiah 55 verse 11, 12. He says, so my word goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, 
without accomplishing what it, I, I desire, without succeeding. So the word does not go, go forth without a certainty, a guarantee of success. Are you hearing that? It does not go out without success. It does not go out without progress. And without succeed in the matter for which I have sent it. So it is purposeful, it, is obje it has an objective and it achieves the objective. That's when the word goes out. For you will go out from the cities with joy, from the exile with joy. How do you get out of exile? Exile is also a representation of things that are not working out for you. You come out of it with what? With joy. And you are led forth by the Lord himself with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth into shouts of joy before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Oh, child of God, without joy, you remain where you are. Get out of exile. Please help me slap your neighbor behind the ear and tell them, get out of exile. Get out of exile. You remain where you are in the absence of joy. If you decide to remain in exile after today's message, Father, let divine acceleration come through my joy this morning. I pray for it. I seize it. I take it. I run with it in Jesus' mighty name. If you are to feel anything, don't feel the emotion of sadness. Feel the emotion of joy. If you are to be high on anything, be high on joy. The more you are high on joy, that means your emotion, everything concerning your emotion has to be joy. Wherever there's, your, your, the, the, where there's emotion that is joyful, there is motion. Did you get it? Whenever your joy is the emotion that you're expressing, let me put it that way. The next thing is motion. There's movement, motion. So your emotions equal your motion. Why you're not moving? Check your emotion. The reason why you, nothing is moving, your emotions are stinking. Whatever weighs you down and tries to tie you down is the thing that is slowing you down. Check your emotion. My father, my father, I pray that there is no emotion that is going to weigh me down. Whatever emotion that has been slowing me down, I uproot you this morning. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you will gain speed in this month of joy. Amen. You will gain speed in this month of joy. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy concerning your life that you will attain victory in every battle that you will mount in this month of October. Amen. You will have victory in every battle because of the joy of the Lord. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are guaranteed the victory in battle. When you get home, make sure you are reading 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22 to 23. Continue, sing for joy. Joshua 6 verse 20, hallelujah. Sing for joy, continue in joy. Your joy will cause your enemies to fight themselves. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I sent the arrow of joy in the enemy's camp. Let them fight themselves. Let them kill themselves in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus Christ. Turn their weapons on each other. Amen. Father, whoever has arisen by whatever they call it, witchcraft, monitoring spirit, every evil eye, eyeing my joy. Every time I testify, they are eyeing my joy. Every time I testify, they want me to move backward. My father, my father, let them fight themselves. Amen. Let them kill themselves. Amen. Let them fall into that pit. Let them die in that grave they dug up for me. In the name of Jesus. Hey, I will not be defeated. I will not be defeated. Victory is my portion. I wish you could declare it for yourself. I will not be defeated. Depression, I resist you. I refuse to be defeated. I will be full of joy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So how are we going to get this thing, Pastor Fortune? The Holy Spirit is the channel for your joy. 
It is the major channel of joy. Holy Ghost, come and rest on me. There's that song that Apostle has, comp has composed lately. Holy Ghost, carry me. Holy Ghost, carry me. I'm even singing it incorrectly. Hey! It was fire in Zimbabwe this week. Holy Ghost, carry me. Holy Ghost, channel this joy. Let the Holy Spirit be lit in you. Let the Holy Spirit, determine in your mind and your heart and your body and your soul that Holy Spirit will flow. The Spirit of the Lord will continuously flow. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. So leave this uh, drinking milk story. <laughs> but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. There's a joy in the Holy Ghost. But others were laughing, Acts chapter 2 verse 13, others were laughing and joking and ridiculing them, saying they are full of sweet wine and are drunk. If you are to get high, get high on the Holy Ghost. Get high on the Holy Ghost. Get high on every, if I say spliff, does it mean it's weed? <laughs> if you are to get high on any weed, let it be the weed of the Holy Ghost. I hope I can say that. Somebody must not go out and say, ah, Pastor Fogin says we must be high on weed. We are going to get weed. Hallelujah. When you wake up in the morning, jump off your bed, speaking in tongues. Ha! The luxurious life that you will be living. Holy Ghost filled. I flow in the Holy Spirit. It's not a language of, of, of just JNJ, but it's a tonic for joy. When you speak in, it's by tonic. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't follow your feelings. If you follow your feelings, you will end up in failure. Follow the Holy Ghost. Follow joy. Take that Holy Ghost joy. Hallelujah. Amen. There are things that you have to force to happen. Matthew chapter 11. Verse 12, for the kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. If you wait for the world to make you happy, you're going to die of depression. Decide to antidote yourself. Give yourself the antidote. Everything is conspiring to keep you down. You must determine to keep them off. The more they try to keep you down, make up your mind, I'm going to kill them. I'm going to keep them off. <laughs> you know, the way you ladies laugh sometimes, like I said, you must go and. But wait, oh, this thing of arrangement, the way you guys sit, women on the other side and men on the other side. The last week we went to lunch, women were sitting on their tables alone. Sorry, I just paused, you know, like I'm trying to. You are doing Shembe style now. It's the second week I'm observing this matter. Have you noticed? Man of God, it's the second week. I'm just observing. If this is a new rule, you must tell me. So that next week you must come with uh, towels and sit on the floor. I'm just saying, I'm observing this thing. And God needs to illuminate. Maybe I miss God. Oh. Those of you who are prayerful intercessors, tell me if I miss God that this is how we will sit now going forward. Men on the one side and women on the other side. Hallelujah. Be enthusiastically optimistic. Look forward to greatness. My counsel as I close, the past is the enemy of, the past, of joy. The past, your past, you must release the past. The past is the enemy of joy. How, Pastor Fortune? Let's go and explore the scriptures. We all know Philippians 3, verse 13 to 14 is very powerful scripture. The Bible says, or Apostle Paul says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have apprehended or to have made it. I don't think I've arrived, but one thing I do, I forget what lies behind, reaching forward to what lies ahead. He says, I forget the past. And it's not only the past that is bad that you forget, you also forget the good. He says, sometimes your past achievements can be a stumbling block for you are realizing that you can actually do more and you can go forward. But let's go back to the issues of the past, the past pains and the past things that have made you cry. If you don't let go of those things, you are not moving. You're not going to move. You're not going to see what God has for you ahead. In whatever way you're still carrying any form of pain that you came with in church today, let it go. 
Do yourself a favor. Go watch the broadcast for the prayers this morning. Because I didn't see some of you. You will be liberated. Let go of the pain that you got in different ministries. I repeat. This morning, we had a lot of prayer. And a lot of people confessed how they had let the pain that happened to them in their past where they used to go to different churches and they couldn't move on in God. That thing is a blockage. It's a blockage. Did the pain happen? Yes. But God can move you forward. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, totally grafted in him by faith. You are a new creature. Amen. Forget the past. Amen. That they could curse you before they can't curse you now. Amen. You are born again now. Amen. You are untouchable now. Amen. There is a spiritual awakening that has happened. You move in that spiritual awakening. You continue to press forward towards the mark of the high calling. You continue to press forward until you attain. I need you to understand this. They cannot be with you. They cannot touch you. You cannot curse that whom God has blessed. Amen. You, With that acknowledgement, as you step out, whatever you might be seeing as you step out on your gate, as you, you see the soil that they would have planted at your door, the soil that they would have planted on your chair in your workplace. Some of you are saying you don't have offices. Be mindful. Observe where you are moving around. You will see things because they don't sleep, these agents of darkness. My father, my father, they cannot succeed. Not while you are still Lord over my life. Oh, the path of the just is a righteous path. There's light that comes. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hebrews 12, 2, as I conclude, says you look away from those things that distract you, that want to bring you down. You look unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of your faith. He's the one who calls you. Release yourself from past errors. Release yourself from past traumas. Anything that hurts you. Hallelujah. Stop lamenting on things you cannot amend. Stop lamenting things you cannot amend. What lies behind is history. What lies ahead is your destiny. Amen. The pains of history must never be allowed to swallow you up. And it must never be allowed to swallow up the joys of your destiny. I hope I'm communicating since you're not making noise. Notes, you must. <laughs> Don't let your yesterday cage you. Otherwise, tomorrow will have no place for you. If you remain in prison insistently because of your yesterday, how can you seize your tomorrow? Not to forget the past is to forego the future because you cannot walk backwards into tomorrow. Some of you are actually thinking about it. Let me practice. If I work backwards, can I walk into tomorrow? <laughs> Somebody was actually playing that in Bali. You were doing it. Hi, Bo. I sensed it that you are trying to practice walking backwards into my tomorrow. You cannot walk into your tomorrow by walking backwards. It's impossible, but you can try it. Tell me if you get it right. In life, this life, you are in a class of your own. Compete only with yourself. You are in a class of your own, alone with God. And God is the only one that determines your promotion. Amen. Human verdict is not divine judgment. The verdict of human beings is not divine judgment. It's not the end. Doesn't matter what they've said, it's not the end. Doesn't matter what they have said, would not. Wait, I was about to flow in the prophet. <laughs> Minister, I'm too. <laughs> My sister, don't hold on to the opinions of people that have said anything concerning your life. The only opinion that matters is your opinion from God. The God's opinion, that's the only thing you need. That's what I wanted to say before you so disturbed me. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Don't worry, Minister Mtsu, don't stress. <laughs> you, you energized it. It's not over until God says it's over, and he will never say it's over until you have won the victory. It doesn't matter what you have lost. If you, if you have lost something, as long as you have not lost Jesus, you have not lost anything. Yeah. Stand up to your feet. Let's pray. Ha, ha, ha. They said I will not finish by one. The devil is a liar. And I even took less than, than the milk pastor. <laughs> lift, <laughs> lift up your hands. Hey. We receive the meat of the spirit. Holy Spirit, welcome. Take your place in our lives right now. Spirit of the living God, take your place right now. Somebody open up your mouth. We are praying as we are closing. We're going to do declarations. Father, take your place. To you be all the glory, O God, today in Jesus' mighty name. Let go of the failures. I want you to open up your mouth and let go of the failures. Let go of your yesterday past things that did not. Just shake it off from you. Shake it off. I shake you off. Every disappointment from yesterday, I shake you off. Opinions of people, I shake you off. I shake you off in Jesus' mighty name. Anything from your past that has been trying to hold on to you, release yourself from it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Anything that is trying to tie you down, release yourself from it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything fighting your future, release it now in Jesus' mighty name. You are released. Mashokota kadia mashateke libro sata kada bashata leke sete kida bakanda dia masoto makoria masoto kodia. In any way that we have aid, my God, no error will hold us back. No error will hold us back. In the mighty name of Jesus, reke sheke te kida bashoto kodia. Oh, I pray for you this morning. Anything fighting your future catch fire. I pray for you. Anything that is a cause of depression in your life, I command it to be broken. Anything that is a cause of depression in your life, I command it to be broken. I command it to be broken. Depression over my family, be broken. Be broken. I command you to be broken. I command you to be broken. In the name of Jesus, I want you to receive the victory. The Lord is giving you victory. Victory from every Every setback, real victory from every setback, every setback from the past. Receive your victory now. Receive your victory now. Receive the help from above. I say your past will not kill you. Your past will not kill you. Your past will not kill you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are receiving help from above. The joy of the Lord is your strength. In this month of October, joy shall be your portion. From the start till the end in the name of Jesus Christ, you will experience unspeakable joy. You will experience unlimited joy. In Jesus' mighty name, I prophesy over you that your past will not kill your future. Your past will not kill your future. Receive a disconnection from anything that makes you sad. I disconnect you from depression. I disconnect you from sadness. Your harvest will begin to look for you. In this month of October, your harvest will begin to look for you. What is yours will look for you. In Jesus' mighty name, the Lord is going to put systems under pressure to bless you. Protocols will be broken to bless you. Systems will be put under pressure to bless you. Systems will lose their peace to bless you. Systems will lose their rest to bless you. Until you come into what is rightfully yours. The Lord is going to release what is rightfully yours. Receive it into your hands right now. I want you to open up your hands and tell your hands, these hands are blessed. These hands are blessed. You will produce. I pray for you right now. The garment of sorrow and the garment of depression is lifted right now. The garment of sorrow and the garment of depression catches fire right now. The garment of sorrow and the garment of depression catches fire right now. Any new garment upon you shall be a garment of joy. Receive the garment of joy upon you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare joy unspeakable is your portion. In 
any way you have been disqualified, let joy qualify you. The mercy of God is qualifying somebody today. Anything that has frustrated you and taken away your joy, it is destroyed. I said it is destroyed. Your success is released. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. There is no waters that will drown you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As you journey through this month in the secure blood of Jesus Christ, every strange fire that has been burning in your family, I command it to be off right now. Any strange fire that has been trying to frustrate you, I command it to be off right now. Any strange fire, any strange fire, all attacks from witches and wizards, I command them to catch fire. Catch fire, catch fire, catch fire. Fire of the Holy Ghost upon them right now in Jesus' mighty name. The miracle that you have been expecting that will stabilize you and will stabilize your family. Receive it now in Jesus' mighty name. May it locate you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mbali, come. Jata kadia basoto. Everybody is speaking in tongues right now. Jato kadia basata kalibro sokote. Rejege de 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 be siona masata kadia masata. Lika soto koche kete. Manta leka sukete prokato shatale pae. Manta la mando o prakatuski mayente leke toshka. E preketoska ma kanta rushe leka ma zontoya. Ma rekete leke toshka parakata la kaya. E katoska manta le pasha le garonta mainde e preke nuska taye. E zopra naite e preke talanto jala kapala. E la kuza yante e preke nushaita paruske lantosa. E papa paruska leka te mante ite e prokantuya. Rakata leka toja ampalu kasu. Kanaide zudaide e prekenushka talamando la roja aproso kotoska mante rakatoja anta krantos kaparuye reziki taya apakatale. La kunai de embreke taido so palika taya mazuze maita akrojata le kra anto paruse la kapansko onta yeke de prunta ya rade te kuzo taya ja kapale kunta maruski mande le kra anto skataya ruka tapala kato shata le kaso prada ide embreke doja rakata prana ido opala kato skataya zaga dala paruska makante te. Rede de leke doska dale proko doska mante e papa ruska leka shaka tamante. E paruska leke tosha la kataya la kaproska mante le karande e perusha razu kataya e prokotosh katale pro ontos kamande. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, somebody. In Jesus' name we pray, somebody. I believe that you were blessed with the word of God. Amen. Amen. As I have told you that you will receive this, uh, I mean the fruit of the spirit. Hallelujah. Now you know when you are depressed what you are going to do. Amen. Amen. Whenever depression comes, you will know what to do. Amen. Amen. So you replace uh, depression with joy. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the antidote. That's the antidote. Amen. Amen. 